What's up everyone, it's Rifle here and thanks for checking out this video. In this one, I got you guys some exciting news in my opinion, but this could be not so exciting for some other people. Anyways, according to several sources, it seems that the currently unannounced 2017 sequel to Destiny, you know, Destiny 2, is apparently coming to PC. But it also is speculated that Bungie aims to make Destiny 2 feel like an entirely new game rather than the Taken Wallet style kind of expansion. And this may mean leaving, you know, old characters behind. But I am almost positive Bungie will end up giving us something for long term players. But it seems that isn't going to be like a continuism of Destiny. It's going to be like a, a fresh start, not just something that we continue with our characters. A real long time ago, though, I actually read something that we'll be able to transfer our characters. But now it seems that the um, whole idea has changed around. The first rumor for Destiny 2 coming to the PC popped up here. As you guys can see, it says, Rumor, Destiny 2 coming to PC, and it was by Benny underscore A, and there's a goat for his, you know, icon picture. Anyways, on this rumor page, we can actually go to another page that gives a more detailed um, look at why this is coming to the PC, or um, how they figured out this was coming to the PC. Anyways, he actually wrote, I know somebody that works at Activision, and he was on a plane and then a train and saw a presentation on another person's laptop. No, serious mode. This is what is being internally communicated to employees. Vicarious Vision and High Moon will help out, which those are game developers, and raid matchmaking is in. And down below it says update. I have also heard that D2 is coming to PC and that Vicarious Visions is working on it. Don't know about raid matchmaking. That'd be dumb in my opinion, unless they finally make matchmaking an option rather than a setting. I expect D2 to feel more like a new game than a continuation of D1. What I heard is that the reason it was rebooted earlier this year and is now helmed by the gaff poster, Luke Smith, is because the original version felt too much like an expansion. I'm expecting them to change everything. I don't think Bungie has decided yet what you'll be able to bring over from year one or what you'll get as a reward for being a long-term player, but I expect a fresh start. So yeah, that is basically uh, a plain and simple approach at what's to come. If we go to this link he has here in his um, post, you can see that there's a whole bunch of information. Anyways, as you can see here, starting right over here at the publisher, informed employees about the news during an internal presentation today, according to Benny A's uh, post. He added another interesting tidbit as well, that the Activision-owned studio Vicarious Visions is also helping out on Destiny 2. Although that isn't public knowledge, I had heard the same thing a few weeks ago too, which adds credence to Benny A's report. Earlier this year, which Benny A, in case you guys don't realize, is who wrote what we just read. Anyways, earlier this year, I had also heard from a person familiar with Bungie's plan that Destiny 2, which is currently slated for a late 2017 release, will be on PC. And this isn't a shocker. Releasing Destiny's sequel on PC will give Bungie actually access to a giant new potential audience, one that was around for the first game you know ditching last gen consoles which Bungie has already done for the recently released rise of iron expansion ensures that they no longer have to worry about antiquated memory restrictions that's the reason why they left behind xbox 360 and ps3 apparently it's for this whole big transition that they have planned which is pretty cool if that's actually true anyways continuing onward with this over the past few months i've also heard that bungie's leadership wants destiny 2 to feel like a proper sequel even if that means leaving old planets, characters, and activities behind. In conversations with this guy who made this post, people connected to Bungie have made comparisons to Blizzard's Diablo 2, which I'm not gonna lie, I played that game a lot, which iterated on the first game in some incredible ways, but didn't carry over characters or content from Diablo. I don't know exactly how much will change in Destiny 2, but all signs points to the developers starting from scratch. D2 is a completely different game, said by one person familiar with the development. And they also had said that Tekken King was a reboot for Destiny 1 to fix small things, and this will be the overhaul to fix big things. One of the terms we'll be hearing often with Destiny 2, according to the sources, is Play in Destinations, a new activity model that will revamp how Destiny's world functions. The plan, from what I've heard, is for Destiny 2's planets to feel more 
more populated with towns, outposts, and quests that are more interesting than the patrol missions that we get right now in Destiny. There will be more involvements and basically more lore and story. I mean, you guys know there is a ton of lore right now for Destiny. If you guys read the actual backstory, but it takes a bit of reading. Maybe they actually plan on transitioning what actually takes a bit of reading more into the story, which it makes it feel like a completely different game, but in reality, it isn't. It's still following the lore, but it isn't like a total, completely different game. I mean, that's just one stab at it. I mean, I don't know if I'm exactly right, but I don't know. They have a lot of lore to work with for, you know, making a whole different kind of feel of a game, in my opinion adding more story, more involvement with characters, I don't know. I feel like that would make the game feel completely different. Anyways, reading more into this, it says Jason also reporting, it's not a lock that your character will carry over to Destiny 2, but Bungie might have something to reward players of Destiny 1. And below for the mod edit, originally posted by Shinobi602, yeah, it's coming to PC. Anyways, from what I'm told, the decision to restructure was made thanks to a major memory ceiling being reached on last gen with regard to the Rise of Iron expansion, which was set to launch in the spring, not fall. Bungie decided to push out D2 since it was behind and needed much more iteration and took advantage of the Rise of Iron delays to use that as basically a content stopgap for the fall of this year. Destiny 2 is being overhauled currently so that they can build upon it in the future without having to work within the framework limitations that D1 was set up. Right now, the way things play out, they have to introduce play spaces so that the players can engage in systems or activities, but it creates a huge barrier that must be overcome on both the networking and design side, so they're going to have to do more open play spaces that incorporate towns, outposts, etc. I mean, you get the point hopefully, into more common areas. This means it's going to have to regard fewer hard lines for areas and having them be gated by menus. The goal is to have players conducting things and making activity decisions while still in control of their character instead of having to exit out into an activity hub. Think of how in World of Warcraft, if you hit a button and queue into activities you want to do all while still playing your character, you don't have to exactly, you know, pop up the screen. Major narrative changes are on board as well for D2. I mean, I already figured this one. It is definitely a smart approach. It seems like they are great with their story. They just didn't actually, you know, push it to its limits in Destiny 1. I actually heard the the writer for Destiny actually, you know, um, ended up getting fired or quit. So their story ended up becoming like half-assed, basically. Anyways, as you can see here, major narrative changes are on board for D2, both in terms of plot direction, pacing, and structure. Major focus focus is going to be on the Cabal and Saturn. Saturn is a play space and is set to be bigger than all of the play spaces currently implemented in the game combined. That just seems freaking awesome. Anyways, this is in large part of the scale of play spaces being redesigned, so it will be both bigger and denser with activities. There is a reason Guardians take the fight to Saturn. Major changes to the engine are also occurring. Their render tech has gone through some major iteration thanks in large part of getting to approach it without having last gen as a limit. Because of this, they are still undecided what, if any, of Destiny's old content, both in terms of play spaces, areas, strikes, and raids, will be available through D2. There is talk in possibly allowing D1 remain as its own client, which follows against how Destiny currently operates. Live Team has been going through some iterations so that they may continue to support Destiny with content after a major content drop. The live team is trying to support a game running on an old engine with its older tools. You know, I mean, that kind of sucks. Whereas the bulk of the development is on the engine framework and enjoying new tools. Because of this, the live team is largely handcuffed and, you know, limited, so don't really expect a whole lot of post-launch content for D1 in the next year. You might get some, but don't get overhyped about it. I guess that's basically what they're trying to say. They, they can't really switch it up because they're stuck with the old. Anyways, however, starting with the launch of D2, we will see far more substantial content dropping in the time between yearly releases as the game and engine and live team have all planned to support that going forward. The team is aware that they need more substantial content throughout the year, not just at the end of it. 
if they do drop D1 content, it likely won't be permanent. They might reintroduce areas in a more D2 fleshed out way, so we might lose temporary access to these places, then regain it or have to fight back for control of it at a later point in the plot. This means we'll get to see older areas or activities through the perspective of the newer content, which also means the older areas might expand considerably by the time we get back to them, since the design goal for play spaces is to now make them both way bigger and way denser with activities, so there's a lot more involvement everywhere. And also, there's another edit at the end here. New races and factions are planned. No idea on what's happening with regards to classes, however. New enemies within factions are also going to be introduced. Take the Scions for the Cabal, for example. They're going to get fleshed out in D2. So, yeah. Hey, if this is actually true, drop this. I am excited to see the improvements. I just want Destiny to keep improving and keep up in their game. I'm excited for this. I feel like they're advancing, just like this article is basically saying. They're reaching a new audience, PC players, and that's exciting. Just how like Overwatch is, basically. You can play Overwatch on the console, you can also play Overwatch on the PC. And I do know, though, Overwatch is pretty different from Destiny. Destiny, you, you have a lot more involvement with building your character, and Overwatch is basically just a multiplayer flat-out game. But yeah, I'm out of here, though, everybody. Hope you guys ended up enjoying this, and if you did, consider leaving a like. It's greatly appreciated, everyone. Anyways, thanks for watching and listening, and remember to stay safe out there and try to avoid sleeping in pee. It can get pretty nasty. Peace out.